confite mini domino, coni am bonus, confite mini domino, alleluia, confite mini domino, Quoni am bonus, confite mini domino, alleluia. Ben Señor aquí con tu paz, solo tú eres santo. Ven, Señor, aquí con tu paz. Aleluya. Ven, Señor, aquí con tu paz. Solo tú eres santo. Ven, Señor, aquí con tu paz. Alleluia. Come and fill our heart with your peace. You alone, O oh Lord, are glory. Come and fill our heart with your peace. Alleluia. Come and fill our heart with your peace. You alone, O Lord, are holy. Come and fill our heart with your peace. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. You are gracious and merciful, O God, slow to anger, rich in love. Receive our prayers as you have promised and uphold us by your spirit until all things mended by your mercy are made whole and well in you. Through Jesus Christ, our healer and our hope. Amen. A reading from Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, 
ask him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hung all the law and the prophets. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Dear sisters and brothers, as we conclude the business of this first day of Synod Assembly, let us quiet our hearts and minds in the presence of God, our Creator, God, our Redeemer, and God, our Sanctifier, in joyful gratitude for all the blessings of this day and the holy work begun, continue, and ended for today. The holy work of Synod Assembly holds such esteem importance in the witness of the body of Christ as expressed and manifested through each congregation, each church organization of the Metropolitan New York Synod and lived out by each member as we practice the way of love. God's unconditional and abundant love as Christ has taught us. This kind of love so well depicted in the following sayings, and I quote, the measure of love is love without measure. And the other one is, what we love, we shall grow to resemble. These are two famous sayings from the teachings and witness of Bernard Abbott of Cleobox, who we commemorate in the calendar of the church today. Bernard was a fierce defender of the church in the 12th century and was famous for the zeal with which he preached love for God without measure. He was completely absorbed in support of the integrity and doctrine of the church of his time. He fulfilled his own definition of a holy man, seen to be good and kind and charitable, holding back nothing for himself but using his every gift for the common good. Bernard was the son of a knight and landowner who lived near Dijon, France. He was born in 1090 and given a secular education. But in 1113, he entered the Benedictine Abbey of Citeaux. His family was not pleased with his choice of a monastic life but he nevertheless persuaded four brothers and about 26 of his friends to join him in establishing a monastery at Cleobox in 1115. During the 10 years that follow, Bernard denied himself sleep that he might have time to write letters and sermons. He preached so persuasively that 60 new Sertinians abbeys were founded, all affiliated with Cleobox. By 1140, his writings had made him one of the most influential figures in Christendom. He participated actively in every controversy that threatened the church. Bernard's works include writings on papal duty, on love of God, and a commentary on the Son of Songs. Among well-known hymns, he is credited with having written a sacred head, sore wounded. Jesus, the very thought of thee, and Jesus, thou joy of loving hearts. In today's gospel, Jesus reminds us that love is what we are meant to be about as his disciples. The text begins by letting us know that when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment is the, in the law is the greatest? In other words, this group of Pharisees came to Jesus 
with a selected spokesperson from their ranks who was a lawyer, meaning an expert on interpreting the law. They had classified the commandments with the law, within the law into 613. So this was a tricky question. And it was a tricky question because the view was that all commandments were equal in importance. Jesus gave them a simple and straight answer by quoting the first commandment. Jesus said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. In Matthew's account, Jesus added a second commandment. You should love your neighbor as yourself, affirming that the second is like the first and that on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. This is significant because there were some who under the pretense that they love God and observe their religious rituals, did not observe, did not practice love for neighbors. They were content with a vertical theology. Jesus makes clear that together these two commandments summarize the entire law and the prophets. The message is that the experience of the transformative, life-giving power of God's love cannot be contained, limited to just this vertical relationship with God. Jesus teaches us that loving God is loving what God loves, and God loves everyone equally and abundantly as precious gifts, as his precious gift to us all. To be in right relationship with God adds the horizontal theology to this equation. The followers of Jesus, we are called to be the barriers of this gift. And a gift is not a gift unless you give it. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whomever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Jesus' depiction of what it means to love God and neighbor as ourselves exemplifies his entire life and teachings and provides for us our job description, literally our job description of what it means to follow his cross as a rule of life or a discipline of the way we are to be in the world. A way of being in the world that demonstrates the how to be in right relationships with God and one another. This vertical and horizontal theology that nurtures us to grow in order to resemble what we love. And that is Jesus. Jesus who taught us that healthy love, that godly love is selfless and gave us a new commandment during the Last Supper to love one another as he has loved us. Now, this is not just the kind of love that we are familiar with. One definition of this love is agape love, an unconditional love, unconcerned with the self and concerned with the greater good of other. Agape isn't born just out of emotions, feelings, familiarity, or attraction, but from the will and as a choice, an intentional choice that defines us as Jesus' disciples. Agape requires our faithfulness, our continue and renew commitment and sacrifice without expecting anything in return. 
This is the type of love Jesus calls to practice in all relationships, no matter our difference, whether we know each other or we are strangers. That love that regards the dignity of all and seeks the well-being and greater good of all so desperately needed in today's broken world. How do we nurture, practice, teach and model this agape love in our congregations, church organizations, and in their surrounding communities? What do we need to do differently to practice this sacred, vertical, and horizontal theology in a new and empowering ways for others to experience this love and be transformed by it in such ways that creates a ripple effect and continuous effect in its recipients to want to share this gift of God as we continue to be church together in ways we have yet to discover. For that we need faithfulness and courage to step into new frontiers and taste risks perhaps never before taken. This is a new opportunity to share our gifts to follow the cross of Jesus and to give the knowledge of his love through our witness as a gift for the sake of the world. Because a gift is not a gift unless we give it. Amen.
Caminemos con Jesús, caminemos con Jesús, caminemos con Jesús. Come, Holy Spirit, renew the whole creation. Send the wind and flame of your transforming life to lift up the church in this day. Give wisdom and faith that we may know the great hope to which we are called. Come, Holy Spirit. Hear us as we pray. Giver of life, sustain your creation. Confront us with our greedy consuming of your gifts. Stand before us as we pillage and destroy. Call us forth into new harmonies of care for all that lives and breathes and has its being. Come, Holy Spirit. Hear us as we pray. Spirit of truth, set us free to emerge as the children of God. Open our ears that we may hear the weeping of the world. Open our mouths that we may be a voice for the voiceless. Open our eyes that we may see your vision of peace and justice. Make us alive with the courage of faith of your prophetic truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Hear us as we pray. Spirit of unity, reconcile your people. Give us the wisdom to hold to what we need to be your church. Give us the grace to lay down those things that you, that you cannot do without. Give us a vision of your breadth and length and height, which will challenge our smallness of heart and bring us humbly together. Come, Holy Spirit. Hear us as we pray. Holy Spirit, Transform and sanctify us as we take up this task in your name. Give us the gifts that we need to be your church in spirit and in truth. Come, Holy Spirit. Hear us as we pray. O loving God, you know the needs of all the world. By your spirit, grant that we, having turned to you in prayer, now might turn to one another in peace. Tend and keep what you have made and love our neighbor with the love of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless us, keep us, and give us peace. Amen. <laughs> sea un árbol en el fondo de tu casa, que haya fiesta y alegría y oración bajo sus ramas, 
con raíces bien profundas y sus brazos hacia el cielo, que esta iglesia sea fecunda dando frutos de consuelo. Árbol plantado junto a las aguas de vida eterna Que esta iglesia también sea como un árbol de la plaza, nido de pájaros libres y refugio del que pasa, y que sea como el árbol de la esquina de mi casa, que me ve llegar de lejos e imagino que me abraza. Árbol plantado. sea un árbol o oh buen Dios en donde quieras, pero siempre apuntalado por tu amor y a tu manera, para dar frutos y sombra o entregar nuestra madera, que esta iglesia que te nombra, árbol de la vida sea. Árbol Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.